So you want to play your PS3 worlds on PC, but you want the authentic PS3 experience. Not a problem, because today I'll be showing you how to port your worlds from your PS3 to the PS3 emulator RPCS3. Before we begin, you're going to need a USB flash drive to put your worlds onto. Once you have one, you want to put it into your PC and make a new folder inside titled PS3, just like this. Then you want to open that folder and make another folder titled Save Data in all caps. This is where the worlds that we copy over will be saved. Double check that your folders are named exactly as I've named them, and then you can eject your USB. Now you'll want to turn on your PS3 and navigate to the game column. Then go to Save Data Utility and find the world you want to copy. Then hit Triangle and in the little side menu, Hit copy, then choose your USB as the location. You can also select multiple worlds to copy at once. While that's downloading, pay attention to the four letter code in the file name. This corresponds to what region the game is for and whether it's a disc or a digital game. I'll explain why this is important in a second. When it's done copying, you can turn off your PS3 and take out your USB. Moving back to your PC, we're now going to download RPCS3 in Minecraft. If you've already done this, you can skip ahead to the timestamp on screen. First, we'll simply look up RPCS3 in our browser and go to their website. There, you can find what operating system you're using and download that version and complete the setup wizard. You'll also need to download a system software update for the PS3. You can find that on PlayStation's own website. Just scroll down on this page here to where it says reinstall using a computer. Hit download or right click and hit save link as. Your browser will try to stop the download, so just hit keep and then it'll finish. Next, you'll want to download Minecraft. This is where that four letter code will come in handy. If you don't remember it, you can find it in your world files on your USB. You'll want to download the same version of Minecraft as you had on your PS3. Although this isn't crucial as you can change the region code in your world data, but if you're porting over a lot of worlds, skipping that step will save you a lot of time. There are several places you can find the version you need, but these should have you covered. Here's a spreadsheet with each region's version with plenty of updates to choose from, and here's a spot to download the BLUS version with basically every update and all the DLCs. This is the one that I will be using in this video. Wherever you choose to get your version from, make sure you download the base game file. Download the one you need and unzip the file. Once you've done that, open up RPCS3. Go to File on the top left and hit Add Games. Find your version of Minecraft and select the folder. You want your version of Minecraft to be compatible with the update of the world you want to play, so that means your update can't be older than the update that your world was last saved in so it's safest to just update the game to the latest update. To update the game, drag and drop a PKG file into RPCS3. Sometimes it will let you skip updates, but in my case, I had to drag every single update in order to get the most recent one. Now, you'll also want to add the firmware update by going to File and Install Firmware, then select the PUP file. Next, we'll be copying our world into RPCS3's Save Data folder. You'll want to open File Explorer, duplicate the tab, and split your windows. Find your USB's Save Data folder on the left side, and then follow where I go on the right. We're going to go to our RPCS3 folder, then Dev HDD0, then Home then 0, 0, all those zeros, 1, and then hit Save Data. Now, drag your world from the USB to RPCS3's Save Data folder. This is where the game will store all of your Minecraft worlds. Now, just because we've put our world into RPCS3, it doesn't mean that our world works yet. Don't open Minecraft like I am, because it'll mess things up, I'm just going to show you what happens if we try to play our world right now. As you can see, 
The world icon doesn't appear and we can't open the world. That's because the world is encrypted. The actual PS3 can read encrypted data, but our PCS3 can't. That means we will need to decrypt the world file so our PCS3 can read it. And for that, we're going to need another program. So head back to your browser and search brute force 4.6 digix. You should see a link to this message board right here that will have all that we need. Open it and then you want to scroll down here to where you see these two links. Click the bottom one, then scroll a bit to this link here that says download PS3 brute force save data v 4.4.2 and click on it. Then choose a place for the download to go. Now you'll want to go back to the previous page and find this comment right here that has a DLL file attached. This will be needed to run brute force. Download that and then close your browser. In File Explorer, locate the brute force file you downloaded and unzip it. Once that's done, you can delete that file. Now you'll also want to do the same with the DLL file you downloaded. It will be called msvbvm50. Just unzip it and delete the zipped file. Then you'll want to click into the new folder that made and hit cut on the DLL file inside. Now go back out and find the brute force folder. Click into it, double click the application called brute force save data installer and complete the setup wizard. When you try to run the program, it will give an error message saying the code execution cannot proceed because msvbvm50.dll was not found. Luckily for us, we already downloaded and unzipped this file. All we have to do is head into the file where brute force was saved and paste in the DLL file. Once we've done this, brute force should open without any issue. So, Open brute force again and click past the messages that pop up. Just hit cancel on them. You want to go up to the top right and click the button with three dots on it and locate your world file in RPCS3. Again, we're going to the RPCS3 folder, dev hdd0, home 001, and save data. Then you can select your world. If you're decrypting a lot of worlds, it can be hard to tell which world is which because the world names are a bunch of numbers. So I recommend going only one or two worlds at a time and working through all of them that way. An interesting thing about the world names is that they're broken up into two sections. The left is the region code for the specific version of the game that the world was made in, and the right is the exact date that the world was created, going from years all the way down to seconds from left to right. Take this world here for example. The 15 indicates that it was made in 2015. The 01 means it was made in January. The 03 means it was made on the 3rd. The 13 means it was created at 1 p.m. because it measures the hours in a range from 00 to 23. 09 means it was made at 109 p.m. And then the 01 means that the world was made one second into 109 p.m. Anyway, I just thought that was interesting and it could help you try and identify your worlds. Once you have your world selected, it should appear on the screen here in Brute Force. You'll want to left click on the world first and then right click on it. Then find where it says Decrypt PFD, click it and hit yes on this pop up here. Now you'll want to go back to File Explorer and find the folder under RPCS3 Dev HDD0 and home that has several zeros and a one at the end. Highlight this number and hit control C. Back in brute force, come down here to the button that says patch SFO and click it and hit edit param SFO. In this menu, click into the account ID box and press control V to paste in the ID number you copied. Then hit save. It will ask you where you want to save this data. 
Just click the existing param.sfo file and hit save to overwrite the old data. If you don't have the same region code in your world files as the version of Minecraft you downloaded, you can fix that now by hitting patch sfo and hitting change title id slash region. Then, just paste in the region code that your version of Minecraft has, and hit OK. Once you're done, you can close brute force. It will ask you if you want to leave the world decrypted. You should hit yes, as again, our PCS3 needs the world file to be decrypted in order to read it. And now, at long last, you can finally open RPCS3, start Minecraft, which will take a while the first time, and your world should be there ready to play. Even though we changed the player ID in the world file, your player data like your location, rotation, and inventory should all still be saved. Although you'll still likely get the little tutorial pop-up boxes when you encounter new things. And your maps might not be filled in anymore. If you have any questions, Leave them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them as well as I can. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Enjoy playing your old worlds.